1973 University of Tennessee football highlights. It was the year of the Comeback Kids. The Comeback Kids, the Comeback Kids. Everybody's talking about the Comeback Kids. The Comeback Kids, the Comeback Kids. Everybody's talking about the Comeback Kids. The Comeback Kids, the Comeback Kids. Everybody's talking about the Comeback Kids. Start out ahead, come from behind. Never seem to doubt that things would turn out fine. Comeback kids, the comeback kids. Everybody's talking about the comeback kids. They won eight games for the ninth straight year, maintaining the tradition of the volunteers. The comeback kids, the comeback kids. There was a pattern to Tennessee football in 1973. The Vols scored on their first sustained possession in seven of 12 games, scored in the first quarter in 10 of those games, came from behind for five of their eight wins and in two of their losses. The Comeback Kids, they didn't wait long to start their act. The opening night game with Duke, 71,000 fans in Neyland Stadium for the season's kickoff. As was to be their script for 1973, the Vols scored on their first possession, a 56-yard drive powered by senior tailback Haskell Standback, carrying here to the Duke 11-yard line. Then after a 16-yard loss, the Vols come back as quarterback Condridge Holloway hits senior end Emmon Love on this 27-yarder and a quick seven-point lead. But Duke has power on the ground, crunching out yardage and a 17-7 halftime lead over the Vols. Enter the comeback kids and their scrambling leader, Holloway. Here, the quarterback escapes from an apparent trap and turns a broken play into a pulsating 49-yard touchdown run cutting the Blue Devils' lead to three points. Big play, the name of the game in 73. This big play comes with less than five minutes remaining in the game, as senior linebacker Eddie Wilson hits the quarterback and junior tackle Robert Pulliam digs out the fumbled football deep in Duke territory. Standback takes this pitch out to the Duke six but the Vols are faced with fourth down and four with little time on the clock. Field goal to tie? Certainly not, not this year. The Vols go for the first down, for the win, and it's the battling Holloway hurdling for the needed yardage. Big play, a fourth down try that paid off. Standback dives across on the next play to score as the Vols snatch victory from defeat with only two minutes left in the game. Tennessee 21, Duke 17. The Vols traveled to New York the following week, taking in the sights and sounds of Broadway before their game with Army at historic West Point, where the Black Knights of the Hudson grabbed a brief three-point lead. But Tennessee quickly got untracked and rolled to a 37-18 victory. It was a game highlighted by the emergence of fleet freshman receiver Stanley Morgan, setting up the ball's first touchdown with this 52-yard catch. Then, later in the game, Morgan scores a touchdown of his own on this 29-yard reception from Holloway. The next week, it was Auburn the must game for Coach Bill Battle and the Volunteers. Auburn had beaten Tennessee three straight years. Was there a jinx? Could the ball stop the streak? A capacity crowd at Shields Watkins Field came to see the game. It started early. Auburn fumbles on the first play from scrimmage, and linebacker Hank Walter, a junior from Knoxville, recovers at the Tiger 23. Holloway carries to the Auburn 13, where the tough Tiger defense holds. And ball specialist Ricky Townsend from Dalton, Georgia, kicks a 30-yard field goal. Again, Tennessee has scored on its first possession. An Eddie Brown interception has given Tennessee the ball at the Plainsman 42 in the second quarter. And it's Standback with a 13-yard run to the Auburn 29. Holloway connects with senior flanker Chip Howard on this 10-yard pass. 
In the scoring drive, Tennessee twice goes for first down on fourth down, making both. The touchdown comes on this seven-yard pass to Love, the senior from Oak Ridge, and Tennessee takes a 10-0 lead into the dressing room at halftime. In the second half, the rains come. Rain, monsoon. Auburn falls further behind, trailing 13 to nothing as the Tigers go to the air in the fourth quarter. Big play. Hank Walter intercepts this errant aerial and splashes 38 yards for a ball touchdown. As the torrential downpour continues, Tennessee's Neil Claybo, one of the nation's leading punters, twice punts on first down, this one covering 71 yards, as Tennessee wins the must game, 21 to nothing over Auburn. The annual trip to Memphis came next for a game with unbeaten Kansas of the Big 8 Conference. Jayhawk quarterback David James was called the finest passer in America. He looked like it against Tennessee. The ball stuck to the 1973 script, scoring on their first possession. Senior Bill Rudder was the key man, first on this 10-yard draw play. Then the Winchester, Tennessee fullback capped the 80-yard touchdown drive with this 30-yard burst up the middle. And Tennessee leads Kansas 7 to nothing. But then the Janes air raid hits for three touchdown passes. And not even this Eddie Brown interception and 74-yard run back can keep the Jayhawks from building a 21-7 halftime lead over the Vols. The comeback kids come back. After Brown recovers a fumble at the Kansas 43, Holloway ignites a drive with this 23-yard scramble and is injured on the play. So senior quarterback Gary Valbuena steps in, connects on this 15-yard pass to sophomore John Yarbrough to the Kansas 8. And on the next play, it's Rudder again, this time for eight yards and his second touchdown of the day as the Vols close the gap to seven points. The Vol defense holds the Jayhawks and Kansas punts to Eddie Brown, senior safety from Guild, Tennessee, who returns it 48 yards to the Kansas 20. The Vols trail 21 to 14, but Stanback, the senior from Kannapolis, North Carolina, helps reverse the momentum as he rams to the Kansas eight yard line. It's first and goal. And on the next play, the senior tailback who holds the Vols single season rushing record runs to the right side to score and the Vols pull into a 21-21 tie with Kansas early in the fourth quarter. Once more, the Vol defense gets the rush to quarterback James, and Kansas punts again. The Vols get the ball at their own 47 and start their march downfield. Holloway eludes the rush and finds Mitchell Gravitt, sophomore tight end from Hickson, Tennessee, whose catch moves the ball to the Kansas 42. Seven plays later, Stanback carries two tacklers over the goal line for his second TD, and the Vols lead Kansas 28 to 21. The comeback kids have come back again, but Kansas has comeback plans of its own, sparked by Jane's passing, and Kansas scores. It's Tennessee 28, Kansas 27, as the Jayhawks decide to go for two points and the win. Freaky season? Yes. 
Kansas has only 10 men on the field. And Tennessee has 11 men around the ball. 11 men as James Pry fails. And Tennessee wins the game 28 to 27. Back in Knoxville the next week, two giant plays stood out in Tennessee's 20 to 14 win over Georgia Tech. The Vols trail seven to nothing when, in the second quarter, Holloway scrambles from a broken play, somehow comes free, and finds Bill Rudder all alone for a tying touchdown pass. After Eddie Brown intercepts a tech pass, Holloway makes one of the most unbelievable runs in Shields Watkins Field history, breaking five tackles. It's Holloway on this 20-yard touchdown and a 14-7 lead. The ball's third touchdown came on this brilliant 40-yard run by tailback Paul Carruthers, Jr. from Lafayette, Georgia, who had his greatest game against Tech. Then it was undefeated Tennessee facing undefeated Alabama before a capacity crowd at Legion Field and millions on TV across the country. The favored Crimson Tide lives up to its advanced billing, scoring on the first play from scrimmage, then adding another touchdown to take a quick 14 to nothing lead over Tennessee. Again, the comeback kids come back. Holloway connects with tight end Tommy West, Gainesville, Georgia sophomore, on this 48 yard pass play that moves the ball to the Tide 30 yard line. Then Holloway passes complete to John Yarbrough, and the Salisbury, North Carolina sophomore twists free and dives into the end zone. It's Alabama 14, Tennessee 7 at the end of the first quarter. Alabama scores again and leads 21 to 7 when Eddie Brown intercepts a Richard Todd pass. Big plays by Brown are very much a part of the 1973 script, and he returns this second quarter interception to the Alabama 38. Holloway passes complete to sophomore Tim Fitzpatrick for 14 yards and a first down at the tied 11. Two plays later, Holloway skips around left end to score and Tennessee pulls to within seven points at the end of the first half. Tennessee strikes swiftly in the third quarter as Holloway threads the needle on this tight end pass, this time to grab it, and the sophomore dashes untouched 64 yards. The comeback kids come back to tie Alabama 21 to 21. But then, Alabama explodes for three touchdowns in a five-minute segment of the fourth quarter, and Tennessee suffers its first loss of 1973. The Vols bounce back the next week against TCU of the Southwest Conference in Knoxville. A game of big plays, like this Valbuena pass to Stanley Morgan, the freshman from Easley, South Carolina, for 52 yards. One of two Morgan touchdown receptions in the Vols' 39-7 romp past TCU. It was the only game of the year which wasn't decided in the final quarter. Back to the script the next week. Score first, fall behind, come back. Tennessee takes the opening kickoff against Georgia and scores. The big play in the 79-yard drive is this 35-yard pass from Holloway to Love moving the ball to the Bulldog 25. And four plays later, Holloway scrambles again, ducking under the rush this time for a seven-yard touchdown as Tennessee grabs a seven-to-nothing lead. Then Georgia marches 80 yards to tie and kicks off. The Vols are ready again with a 77-yard march, initiated by this 20-yard scramble by Holloway. All SEC quarterback of the year. 
and the 13-play drive is culminated by this six-yard pass from Holloway to fullback Steve Chancey, senior from Knoxville. Tennessee leads Georgia 14-7. Then Georgia comes back and owns a 21-14 lead at halftime. Defensive end Sammy Hare recovers a fumble at the Bulldog 36 in the third quarter, and the turnover is converted into a 48-yard field goal by Townsend, like Hare, from Dalton, Georgia. It's now 21-17 Georgia when the Bulldogs are forced to punt. Senior Eddie Brown brings the capacity homecoming crowd to its feet with a stirring 85-yard return. As the balls come back again, this time to take the lead, 23 to 21. The run back sparks the ball defense, which throttles Georgia in its next series. And Tennessee gets another scoring drive started. Haskell Standback gets great blocking as he sweeps right in to roll for 17 yards and a first down at the Georgia 46. It's Standback again on the next play, around the right side once more for 15 yards to the dog 31. Holloway is back to pass, then scrambles free up the middle for 15 more yards to the Georgia 16. Holloway's scrambles are by now also part of the 1973 script. Standback scores minutes later, and the balls look safe at 31 to 21. But Georgia comes back, and when Tennessee fails to make a fourth down fake punt at its own 28, Georgia takes over, moves in to score a 35 to 31 win. For once, the balls of 73 don't come back. And at Jackson, Mississippi, Ole Miss takes the initiative and the lead and defeats Tennessee 28 to 18, despite this third quarter touchdown pass from Balbuena to Paul Carruthers. Tennessee goes to Lexington the next week to play the senior dominated Wildcats at beautiful new Commonwealth Stadium. Back to the script. Kentucky kicks off and the Vols score on their first possession. A picture-perfect 71-yard drive. 18 plays, almost nine minutes. Nothing fancy, just power football, like this six-yard advance by fullback Chansey. Tennessee makes two fourth-down tries in the drive, which is capped by this powerful six-yard burst by Standback. Tennessee leads six to nothing and a 47-yard Townsend field goal makes it 9 to nothing at halftime. The Vols appear to have things rolling when Bill Rudder pops through the line and rambles for 60 yards and a touchdown in the third quarter, giving Tennessee a 16 to nothing lead. But this is the year of the comeback. And Kentucky, which hadn't beaten Tennessee in eight years, makes a valiant try, closing the lead to only two points and, in the final minutes, moving into range for a game-winning field goal try. There are only 19 seconds left in the game as Kentucky lines up to try the 34-yard field goal. It looks like a sure shot, but the Wildcats miss, and Tennessee holds on to win 16 to 14. The Vols are now seven and three, as Captain Eddie Brown leads his teammates through the giant tee for the final game of the year at Neyland Stadium. Chapter 11, same script. Tennessee scores the first time it gets the ball, this time going 65 yards in 13 plays. The scrambling Holloway keeps the drive alive with this 17-yard run to the Bandy 18. Two plays later, Tennessee takes the lead on this seven-yard run by Standback.
the Tennessee defense is stout, and Vandy cannot move the ball. So, late in the first quarter, the Commodores punt. A 58-yard kick that backs Eddie Brown up to his own 20. The senior safety sprints down the sideline, waits for the wall to form, then accelerates suddenly and races 80 yards for a touchdown and a 14 to nothing lead. Again, it appears Tennessee has things under control, but Bandy has other ideas as it erupts for 17 points in the fourth quarter. Suddenly, Tennessee is behind by three. The comeback of comebacks. Third down four for Tennessee. Holloway, injured in the third quarter, returns and promptly scrambles for seven yards and a vital first down. Then, moments later, the junior quarterback makes one of his unbelievable scrambles to turn a broken play into a big play. Eluding tackler after tackler to come open and throw this pass to Emmon Love for a 34-yard gain. The Vols are in business as Townsend ties the game with a 34-yard field goal. Vanderbilt tries a fake punt on fourth down. But Art Reynolds and Steve Poole stop the play for no gain. Tennessee has new life with a first down at the Vandy 24. The Vols are getting the ball into field goal position as Carruthers moves for four yards to the center of the field, where, with only a minute and eight seconds left in the game, Ricky Townsend is called on for a game-winning 37-yard field goal. The kick is good, and Tennessee has come back again to beat Vanderbilt 20 to 17. The victory enables the comeback kids to finish eight and three, the ninth straight year in which Tennessee has won eight or more games. And for the ninth straight year, Tennessee enjoys the excitement of a bowl game, this time to Jacksonville, Florida, and the Gator Bowl game with Texas Tech. The script, much the same. After Texas Tech opens up a two touchdown lead, the comeback kids, sparked by one of Stanback's fine running performances, this one good for 33 yards, play inspired football in the third quarter, closing the gap to 14 to 10. Then, trailing 21 to 10, a 62 yard Eddie Brown punt return sets up a scoring drive and Holloway puts the balls within two points with this touchdown pass to Stanback. It's 21 to 19. And the next time the balls get possession, they march downfield, powered by runs such as this 12-yard burst by Chansey. But a last second field goal misses, and the balls lose their first bowl game in four years. Coach Bill Battle reviews the year of the comeback kids and looks ahead to 1974 for Vol football fans. 1973 was the year, the ninth year in a row that Tennessee has won eight or more games. It was successful in that light, but I'll remember it in as far as some other things are concerned. Three key things uh, go down in my memory about this football season. They were big plays, confidence, and frustration. It was a year of maybe of more big plays, of longer touchdown runs and passes than we've had in the eight years that I've been at Tennessee. There was an air of confidence about this football team that they believed that they could win. They were cool under pressure when they were ahead by 14 or behind by 14. They were still cool and came back to pull some extremely tough games out of the fire. I would like to pay tribute to the seniors in 1973. I think they're an exceptional group of young men fine leaders, outstanding character, and good ability. I think they were marked by frustration because of the injury situation. The 1974 schedule is one of the toughest in Tennessee history. Our opening five games are UCLA in Los Angeles, Kansas, Auburn in Auburn, Alabama, Alabama, and then LSU in Baton Rouge. This presents a very great challenge, but a great, very great opportunity to the 1974 football team. I think looking ahead to 1974 and the future, 
this year had some things that uh, will be important for the future. The injuries, uh, although they're not good things, uh, there are some bright spots in that they allowed some freshmen and sophomores and juniors to gain valuable playing time that I think will be important toward this 1974 season. I think that uh, 74 shapes up as an exciting year as one of uh, additional big plays and some big play people returning. Everybody's talking about the comeback kids, the comeback kids, the comeback kids. That's how we'll remember them, the comeback kids.